So let's now introduce a new parameter, which we call E. That's a job search effort by an employed workers. So in the previous model, we didn't have that. In a sense, in the previous model, we kind of assumed that E was just equal to 1. You know, all unemployed workers search with effort 1. That's how we can interpret it. But here we want to have uh, E that appear in our model, and then we want to study what happens when E varies. And in particular, you know, because we're interested in these situations in which matching frictions disappear, we'll want to look at what happens when E goes to infinity. So basically, when people are really desperate to work, when they walk all the way to the factories and camp in front of factory gates, what happens to unemployment? And what I'll show you is that there are no job queues, there are no queues of workers in the standard model and the rigid wage model, which means that when E goes to infinity, unemployment disappears, which is um, Counterfactual, you know, it, it's not consistent with the cues that we uh, observe in the Great Depression and the Great Recession. So, how does the model change if we want to allow for some job search effort E? Well, uh, what's going to happen is that um, we have to change the way the matching function works. So, here we have a job search effort E. So, the total uh, that, so E is, is an effort per worker. So now the total amount of job search effort that's going to be E times U, the number of unemployed workers, right? Because E is an effort per worker. Now the matching function before was only a function of the number of unemployed and the number of vacancies. But more generally, what matters for matching is the number of vacancies. These are, these are uh, you know, it captures the recruiting effort on the firm side. And what you want is to have the total effort of search put on by the unemployed worker. So what should matter is not the number of unemployed workers, but the total amount of effort. So it's not u, but e times u. So before e was 1, so e times u and u were the same. But now we want to put as an argument into our matching function the total amount of effort. So it means that the matching function is going to become m of e times u and v. Okay? instead of just depending on u. And e times u is going to enter the matching function because that's what describes the total search effort. Okay? So now that's our, uh, that's, our new, uh, that's our new matching function here. Okay, uh, so what does that change? Well, it means that we also have to change the definition of our labor market tightness because labor market tightness at the high level is the ratio between the two arguments in the matching function. You know, the arguments that describe the search effort on the worker side and the arguments that describe the search effort on the firm side. So before, the ratio of the two, two arguments was V over U because the two arguments were V and U. Now the two arguments in the matching function are V and E times U. So we have to redefine the matching function as V over E times U. Sorry. Uh, So the labor market tightness is going to become theta is equal to V divided by E times U instead of being V over U. Okay, so that's a change. So now what about um, our job funding probability and uh, vacancy filling probability? How do they change?
the vacancy filling rate. So the definition remains the same. If the number of matches in at uh, per unit time divided by the number of vacancies, so it's going to give to give you the rate at which vacancies are filled, and so that's going to be m of e u and v divided by v, uh, using the assumption of constant returns to scale, and using the new definition of tightness, which um, I should have highlighted here. This is going to give us m of, so I use first constant returns, okay, and so the vacancy filling rate is going to be equal to m of 1 over theta n1. Okay, um, so it means that our vacancy filling rate depends only on tightness as before, except that now tightness is a new definition, but that's not uh, that's not very relevant. And so this we can again call it Q of theta with all the same properties as before. So the vacancy filling rate uh, hasn't changed at all. It's only a function of theta, which we can call uh, Q of theta, and it's decreasing in theta and so on and so forth. So that doesn't change at all. But it was a job finding rate. So here something uh, will have changed. So the job finding rate is um, the rate at which one unemployed worker finds a job. So it's the total number of matches per unit time divided by the number of unemployed. So that's going to be M of EU and V divided by U. We can rewrite that as E M of EU and V divided by EU. You will see why, it's because I want to um, be able to introduce tightness again. So that's going to be E. M, and now I use constant return, so I have EU divided by U, that's 1, V divided by U. That's E, M, 1, oh, and theta. And M of 1 theta, that's just our function F of theta that we had before. So now the job finding rate is not only a function of theta, as before, but it's a function of theta and E the effort. So basically, a worker who puts an effort E is going to find a rate at a job E times F of theta. Which is different than before. Because now we have E that shows up here. Okay, and so if you want, now what that means is that f of theta is the job finding rate per unit of effort and per unit time. So that the, the job finding rate per unit time is e times f of theta. Okay. So what does that matter? Well, it's going to matter because it means that now, uh, so the, you know the vacancy filling rate is the same, exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Q of theta. So what we infer from that is um, that on the firm side, you know, if I give them a tightness, nothing, uh, nothing changes at all. So what we infer from that is that the labor uh, labor demand is unchanged. Okay, uh, so that's good. But now we see that the job finding rate is different. And so what we infer from that is that the labor supply would be different once we introduce 
notre général Job Search Effort I. And so, what's going to be our new uh, labor supply? Well, we can, uh, you know, we can follow exactly the same logic as before. So, I'm going to compute the new labor supply curve. Um, so we start from the fact that the labor supply describes, so here workers are putting in an effort E and the labor supply is going to describe how many workers are able to find a job, uh, to have to hold on to a job and have a job once the job search effort is E and tightness is theta, um, you know, and um, flows are balanced. Because labor supply always describes a situation with balanced flows. So if flows are balanced, we know that the number of people who lose their job, which is S times L, has to be equal to the number of people who find a job. The number of people who find a job, it's the number of unemployed times uh, uh, the number of people times the rate at which the unemployed find a job per unit time, and that's E times F of theta. So here you see there is a new thing, which is the effort that wasn't involved before. Okay, um, and then you know we follow exactly the same steps as we had earlier. So S times L is equal to E, which is just a parameter times F of theta times U. But U is the number of unemployed. The number of unemployed is just the number of people who are in the labor force minus L, uh, the number of people who have a job. And then if we reshuffle stuff around, uh, collect all the terms that depend on L, what do we get? Um, we get that S plus EF of theta times L is equal to E times F of theta times H. I've just uh, brought all the terms here associated with L on the left hand side. And then if I wish of all terms, I'll obtain my labor supply curve which depend on tightness, as before, but here also depend on E, the parameter that captures effort. And then it's going to be E, F of theta, divided by S plus E, F of theta, times H. So here, all the properties of the labor supply with respect to tightness remain the same as before. Nothing has changed. With respect to tightness theta. And um, we can list uh, a few of these uh, properties. So for instance, it remains true that the labor supply assessed at zero tightness and some any effort E is equal to zero. It remains true that the labor supply is going to be increasing in tightness. So the partial derivative of LS with respect to theta. Um, is possible. And um, these are for exactly the same uh, reasons as before because you know, the form of the labor supply is almost exactly the same. You just have this parameter E that shows up, but that doesn't change anything uh, because E is positive. Theta is going to influence F of theta, the job uh, finding rate per unit time and per unit of effort. F of theta is the same function as before. So when theta changes, F of theta changes the same. It's multiplied by E, but that, that will have really uh, no effect on the properties here. Uh, and it also... Uh, remains the case and the limit when theta goes to infinity of the labor supply at theta and E is going to be equal to H. So this nothing has changed. That's because when F uh, theta goes to infinity 
f of theta goes to infinity and the labor supply converges, uh, you know, the, uh, the labor supply is going to convert to h, the size of the labor force. Okay, so this nothing has changed. Now, what about the properties of LS with respect to the effort? And uh, so using exactly the same logic, we can see that when the search effort is zero, when the search effort is zero, well, that brings EF of theta to zero, so it's exactly the same as when tightness is zero. So the labor supply will also be zero if there is no search effort. What about the partial derivative of effort with respect to E? That's going to be positive, exactly as with tightness. When tightness goes up, F of theta goes up, and as a result, the whole fraction that we have here, E F of theta divided by S plus E F of theta, that's going to go up. The same is true when E. When E goes up, E times F of theta goes up, and therefore the whole fraction is going to go up. Okay? So when you increase search effort, it's exactly like when you increase tightness, you're going to boost um, your labor supply. So if people search more, more people will have jobs uh, for any level of tightness. Okay? And um, the limit of the labor supply when effort goes to infinity, similarly, it's also going to be H. Uh, for the same reason as with tightness. When tightness goes to infinity, f of theta goes to infinity, e f of theta goes to infinity. When e goes to infinity, e f of theta also goes to infinity, and therefore um, the whole fraction, e f of theta divided by s plus e f of theta is going to go to um, converge to 1, and therefore the labor supply is going to converge to h. So very similar properties in the two cases, with uh, the effect of tightness and effort on the labor supply are um, very close to each other. Okay. So more tightness, more effort will tend to boost the labor supply. Okay. Um, all right, so we've introduced our effort. We've seen that the labor, de the labor demand doesn't change. The labor demand doesn't change. The labor supply is changed, but we see exactly how it is, how it's changed. So now what we can do, uh, now we can revisit what's going to happen in the standard matching model and the rigid wedge matching model when effort goes to infinity. And, uh, and, and we'll be able to see that in fact when people are desperate to get jobs, unemployment vanishes, which is another manifestation of the fact that frictional unemployment, all unemployment is frictional in that model. There is no lack of job whatsoever.